get excited. Wait, right you know, I, I have a question. This is how I will get excited about Mars. Okay. Can you Go make a it. sex tape on Mars? I think so. It's forty percent of the gravity. Okay. Oh. Just think, you'd be not floating. So there would be like this whole like well, less than half. <laughs> We're seeing people in, in being indoctrinated to believe that creationists can't be scientists. There's experimental or observational science, as we call it. That's using the scientific method, observation, measurement, experiment, testing. All scientists, whether creationists or evolutionists, actually have the same observational or experimental science. Now, uh, Mr. Ham and his followers have this remarkable view of uh, a worldwide flood that somehow influenced everything that we observe in nature. A 500-foot wooden boat, eight zookeepers for 14,000 individual animals, every land plant in the world underwater for a full year. I ask us all, is that really reasonable? You'll hear a lot about the Grand Canyon, I imagine, also, which is a remarkable place, and it has fossils. And the fossils in the Grand Canyon are found in layers. There is not a single place in the Grand Canyon where the fossils of one type of animal cross over into the fossils of another. In other words, when there was a big flood on the Earth, you would expect drowning animals to swim up to a higher level. Not any one of them did. That's the stuff that the National Center for Science Education is really diligent about. And they pointed out the, uh, the ark and the extraordinary claims about that. And I had never really read much about the Wyoming, which was a wooden ship oh, yeah. built in the early 1900s that sank. You know, it was, uh, wood is a fantastic material, amazing material, but when you have a ship that was a football field long, it just twisted, and I mean, it's sad, the thing sank, all, losing all hands eventually, but, uh, but it is a lesson to be learned that, you know, if the world's most skilled shipbuilders couldn't do it, could eight family members with no tools pull it off? Thank you very much for inviting me. This is quite an honor to be given a chance to speak to you. Uh, fundamentally, I just think that we are all scientists. Every human who is successful on the earth thinks scientifically, evaluates the world around him, decides what to do each and every day based on trial and error and what we would call traditionally the scientific method. Now, people ask me all the time, people ask me very often, now, what, what is your secret? How do you, how do you combine science and entertainment how do you combine a show about science with something that's so fun and interesting and to me fundamentally there's nothing more compelling there's nothing more interesting there's nothing more charming than science the world is this wonderful mysterious place and what we try to do on the show is show our viewers how exciting it can be so if Bill Nye and I went to the Grand Canyon, we could agree that that's a Coconino sandstone in the Hermit Shale, and there's the boundary. They're sitting one on top of the other. We could agree on that, but we would disagree on how long it took to get there. But see, none of us saw the sandstone or the shale being laid down. There's a supposed 10 million year gap there, but I don't see a gap, but that might be different to what Bill Nye would see. But, but see, there's a difference between what you actually observe directly and then your interpretation in regard to the past. We're, we're talking about the past when we weren't there. We didn't see those tree rings actually forming. We didn't see those layers being laid down. It's like the dating methods. You're assuming things in regard to the past uh, that aren't necessarily true. The fundamental thing we disagree on, Mr. Ham, is this nature of what you can prove to yourself. When people make assumptions, they're making assumptions based on previous experience. They're not coming out of whole cloth. I encourage you to explain to us why, why we should accept your word for it, that natural law changed just 4,000 years ago, completely, and there's no record of it. She wrote that question, mm -hmm. and it was, what, if anything, would change your mind? And that's sort of the essence of the whole thing. Because I went, you know, of course, I went off, blah, 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 well, what if we found fossils frozen in layers in the Grand Canyon? What if there was some way for starlight from stars farther than 6,000 light years away to get here in 6,000 years? Well, that was a good one, yeah. What if the Big Bang, the microwave background radiation, what if there's some way to get that there? You know, blah, 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 blah. And of course, as you may recall, if you watch this, Mr. Ham said nothing. Nothing yeah. would change his mind. So. Imagine if you're on a jury. I mean, or rather, you're accused of something, and these guys are on the jury. What would you? Nothing. Uh, evidence doesn't matter to me. I'm good. You know. 
like it's really an extraordinary point of view, and it wouldn't matter. Right. Except, uh, I mean, you know, these guys can, you know, do it. It's a free country, as we say. Uh, but they have a complete or uh, thorough curriculum where they indoctrinate young people. That's a big deal with them. They got DVDs and workbooks and quizzes. And uh, they look just like science tests. There's be electricity, amps and volts, and uh, mitochondria, and then at the bottom, and the Earth is 6,000 years old. Mm -hmm. It's really, and as I say, we just can't, it is not in anybody's best interest to raise a generation of science students who doesn't, that cannot reason, that does, has no critical thinking skill. And that's where they cross a line. A wiener. That is one hot dog. To address that and the previous thing, we look to you. Okay, I'm a voter, and I'm hiring you people to solve these problems, with all due respect. Okay, so what it takes is leadership. This business of uh, the, the uh, rich neighborhoods having better schools than the poor neighborhoods is ancient. This is near as long as uh, it's centuries old. And this just takes leadership to compel people that it's, uh, it's really in their best interest to, to change this. It's really in everyone's best interest not to have poor people not getting good educations. And in a society that is increasingly dependent on science and technology, we are headed for disaster if we do not get these people, uh, get everyone uh, with a minimum of a, of a science understanding of the world. And so I really... I will, I'm doing absolutely all I can every day to change the world, but I really look to everyone in all branches of government to lead people to make sure that everyone gets a good education. Natural law hasn't changed. As I talked about, you know, we, I said we have the laws of logic, the uniformity of nature, and that only makes sense within a biblical worldview anyway of a creator God who set up those laws, and that's why we can do good experimental science, because we assume those laws are true and they'll be, they'll be true uh, tomorrow. We build models based upon the Bible, and those models are always subject to change. The fact of Noah's flood is not subject to change. The, the model of how the flood occurred is subject to change uh, because we, we observe in the, in the, in the current world and, and we're able to uh, come up with maybe different ways this could have happened or that could have happened, and, and that's part of that scientific discovery. You cannot ever prove using uh, you, you know, the, the scientific method in the present, you can't prove the age of the Earth. So you can never prove it's old. So there is no hypothetical. <laughs> what we want in science, science as practiced out on the outside, is an ability to predict. We want to have a natural law that is so obvious and clear, so well understood, that we can make predictions about what will happen. And the big thing I want from you, Mr. Ham is can you come up with something that you can predict? Do you have a creation model that predicts something that will happen in nature? Really, there's a tree in Sweden that's believed to be over 9,500 years old. You can go to a park in California and there are bristlecone pines that are over 6,000 years old. So, Mr. Ham, <laughs> dude, you can't be serious. You can't be serious. But, but here's, the, he here's the crazy thing. He will say, and, and I find this argument difficult to have with people, but he will say, how do you know? And you'll say, well, tree rings. Okay, well, you can say those tree rings that formed in the 50 years that we've been looking at this tree or thinking about tree rings, okay, maybe. But you don't know how long it took for those other tree rings to form. Yeah, we do. Well, yeah. you do. So, so, but I know what you mean, and I, I'm okay. right there with you. So. Then I said, well, if, if there, and this was arithmetic, if there's 16 million species now, and you've had 4,000 years, that means we need 11 new species a day. Not 11 new animals or plants, 11 new type, never new species of animals. <laughs> and I did this, you know, and then how many, in order to get ice cores with six, 680,000 layers, you'd have to have 150 snow win winter snow cycles every year the last 4,000 years. I mean, it's not working out. Mm -hmm. Let me s say I'm sure each and every one of us believes in something that we have no evidence for. 
Mm -hmm. it, don't you think? Oh, sure. Yeah. Like, fish like me, or so, you know. Right. I, mean, I don't know. So, we all believe in something that there's no evidence for, and that's fine, as long as you keep it separate from the process of science and critical thinking. Mm -hmm. So, I know many people, for example, some of my best friends, yeah, are Catholic, and they get a lot of community, a lot of uh, strength from being, uh, sharing this experience. And I understand that, but that doesn't mean the Earth's 6,000 years old. It just can't be. And that the Pope has issued this statement, that's great. But uh, that's not an extraordinary thing. I mean, you know what I mean? That's, it, it's, it's news, I guess. But <clears throat> it seems to me the Catholic Church has had sort of an enlightened view of, of many things for decades now. Uh, <laughs> No, but I mean, there was a couple centuries when they weren't so great at stuff, right? No. <laughs> well, the important thing we can teach, I think, now, there's the knowledge is expanding so fast. There's so much going on in the world. Every day, uh, with electronic communication and libraries accessible to so many people, uh, human knowledge is expanding faster than anyone could absorb it all. So what we need to teach is the process of science what we say, what I like to say, how we know what we know. How we know that dinosaurs once walked the earth. How we know that the earth goes around the sun. How we know that uh, acquired immune deficiency syndrome is a result of a virus. These are fundamental things that the, the facts are very important, but the way you come to know the facts is much more important. And this is what is currently called critical thinking. And I think it's the most important thing that we can teach. And I hope that we can all work together to improve uh, education in this nation so that the United States is once again the preeminent uh, science and technology community in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. There really is no such thing as consciousness at all. And that there's some other understanding of the functioning of the human brain that renders that question obsolete. To that, I've got to say, like, oh, wow. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Am I, am I like, thinking?